So these are the steps taken to have advanced steel recognized, customized prototypes created in the default location. So you can see I'm going to the prototypes folder and I'm opening up a single and CD. I'm going to go in and make some changes, just some slight changes, just to show the difference. So I'll change the text color and save the changes to the HyperSteel page header and sync it. I'll now save the title block with a customized name. There we go, and save. This customized prototype is saved in the default location. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to create a drawing using the out of box. You can see it's with the American flag. So this is the American installation. Advanced Steel is now creating the drawings. I'm going to X out and go to my document manager and you can see the drawings have been populated on a sheet until it's full and run to the next sheet. So this one has created three drawings. You can see that the prototype that we've created has not been used. In order for Advanced Steel to recognize the prototype created in the default location, we're going to have to go to the drawing process manager and we are users so under the user category we're going to scroll to all single parts page 4 and CD. Now we have to go to the file name selector and you see in the prototype I've already put JB I'll put in JB again just to show you I'm going to select OK then use. So Advanced Steel is creating the same drawings over again although we're starting at drawing number four. So hopefully, if this is done right, drawing number four, five, six, however many details it creates, should have the customized prototype. So there you can see drawing number four. There's a changes that we put in. Again, you have drawing number five and drawing number six. So these are the steps taken to have advanced steel recognize customized prototypes created in the default location.